Press the bell icon and hit the subscribe button for more Film Me Show Me updates. Karan, uh, first of all, it's wonderful to be catching up with you uh, very uh, quickly, actually, since we did our last podcast. So thank you so much for taking the time out to speak with Filmi How are oh, you doing? Oh, for sure, man. I'm doing good, man. As you can see, I just got done with a workout, trying to keep busy, trying to stay productive. Mm. And uh, I really enjoyed our last chat, which is why I was looking forward to this conversation. How have oh, you been doing? Oh, that's amazing. I'm sure it will definitely be another really uh, intriguing and engaging conversation as well. Uh, I've been good. Uh, back-to-back interviews. Uh, it's just been very busy, surprisingly, even during lockdown, which is great. Um, I, I don't know if it's me, but things are slowly but surely going back to well, some semblance of normal. So. Yeah. Some people are going back to work. So I think that's a positive, you know. It is. is opening up and stuff. No, yeah, definitely. In fact, um, schools, of, I think, I believe are opening as well uh, from uh, the coming week. So I think that's also a great sign. But I don't know. To yeah. some extent, there's that part of me that's actually kind of like, who kind of enjoys being at home. I don't know. I just become so accustomed to it it's like suddenly bahar jana it's like oh my god like it just seems yeah like- i know what you mean this is because this has become like the new normal right so yeah like see before our definition of going out out was going clubbing and stuff like that but now going out out right. just means going grocery shopping so right exactly <laughs> it's quite funny but i mean look good, actually- man you seem in good spirits it looks Thank like you. you're doing a good job with Thank the lockdown you, <laughs> thank you man trying my best uh, likewise with you as well i've been seeing all your workout videos i think it's quite wonderful to see you working hard and sort of getting into that clean, you know, fit machine. I'm trying, man. I'm trying to get back in shape to what I was, hopefully, because if work resumes soon, then I should be, like, willing and ready to go. Definitely, man. Definitely. But, yeah. look, congratulations on one year of blank. I mean, I know it's just been over a year. Thank you, man. But Thank what you. has been um, the biggest change for you? I mean, what has been the greatest learning for you since blank? Um... I don't know specifically what it might be, but I think, you know, I think as most people in the creative field tend to do when I watch back some of my work or some of the scenes from not just blank, some of the earlier short films and stuff that I've done, I always think of things I can do differently. And I think uh, the creative uh, space is one where I think you can only get better by doing. So I think in this one year since the film's got over, gotten over, I've assessed myself a lot. There's been a lot of introspection. There's been a lot of observation. And I've been seeing a lot of stuff. And I think I'd like to think at least that, you know, I've uh, improved uh, a little in terms of my craft. And I think that's the thing about this business. You know, the more time you give it and the more time you're in it, I think you steadily get mm-hmm. better. So that's just what I've been trying to do, man. Just make steady progress. And uh, I hope that that reflects, you know, in my upcoming projects. No, definitely. Um, you know, you said that you've been watching a lot, right? So what have you been watching? Anything in particular that's kind of, um, I guess, piqued your attention or something that you think that you can actually learn from? Um, I've been watching uh, a lot of stuff. I actually uh, saw this, started this uh, show called Space Force yesterday, um, which has Steve Carell in it. He's one of my favorite actors, man, and favorite comedians by far. So I started watching that. Um, started watching this animated series called F is uh, for Family as well, yeah. which is created by one of my favorite stand-up comedians in the world, Bill Burr. So I've really been enjoying that. And um, we, we, I also saw this uh, film called uh, The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind, which I didn't even realize till we were like at the end of the film was the true story about this guy. And I think it is one of the most uh, inspirational films that I've seen in a long time. So well shot, so well performed. Uh, it actually really like made me cry and made me so emotional. So yeah. Mm. It's so I mean, obviously, because uh, Blank, your character in Blank was obviously a very um, rugged role. It was obviously, it was, was, wasn't was a bad negative role per se. It was just mm. a role which was grey. Um, so what sort of areas do you hope to explore now that you've obviously done something which is as neat as that in Blank? Um, I think I've said, even in a previous interview, I never want to be pigeonholed as one sort of actor. I think I want to be someone who's able to play um, 
a multitude of different uh, characters and roles and uh, that's something that i really enjoy doing because uh, i think in our podcast i told you as well i really like uh, characters and stories where i can challenge myself uh, and blank like you said was in that sort of more realistic gritty dark zone and even the short films i've done have been in that space but i love to experiment with uh, comedy um, first and foremost i think it's my favorite genre if i had to pick and i think it's the toughest uh, to execute but i want to do everything man i want to like dabble with everything and uh, i just want to be competent at everything because i just you know for me i think success would be if i'm you know capable enough to play different characters and be versatile you know with my with my work so yeah i look forward to doing everything man. but comedy okay. first and foremost right so comedy is definitely a, a sort of area that you're sort of intending to uh i definitely want to try and do something uh, for sure mm i think uh during lockdown i think the biggest news of the entertainment industry i mean obviously besides you know two legends of course you know passing away and leaving us so except yeah. for that i think another big if i can say positive news um was of course tenet the tra- second trailer of tenet um right I don't know if have you seen the trailer what was your reaction I have I have I think you know it's good and you know it's a Christopher Nolan film when you watch two trailers and still don't understand what I was going <laughs> yeah. on yeah. so just based on that but whatever little I could understand based on uh, the, the the dialogue trailer that they released I think it looks like any of his other films uh, it looks extremely intriguing it looks very compelling and with Christopher Nolan you actually never know what to expect till you actually go and watch the film yourself yeah. it's always an event and it's always an occasion so i'm i'm a big fan and uh, i'm really looking forward to it it's really funny cuz one of my friends um i remember we watched uh, inception together he's like a desi friend of mine and we watched it together and he was like wow what a good film like mujhe samajh bhi nahi aaya i was like yeah. really i i i mean inception was one of those films i did understand uh, the first time i think people sort of drove themselves crazy with the totem and the whole ending but i never i, I don't think personally that that was christopher nolan's intention with that ending i think it was just something that was supposed to be left be and that is the beauty of film it's our interpretation of things and he just wanted to people to come up with their own conclusion but people just want to like nitpick and say no what we think is right so it just became into this argument but i i i think it was the perfect ending and i i think if you really take your time with it and watch it there's nothing that you yeah. won't understand with any of his films i think that's the case yeah i mean look tenet i think i think the only reason why i'm really I mean, of course christopher nolan yes but i think one of the major reasons why is the fact that jim kapadia is in the film and yeah. i think seeing her in the trailer i mean i was a bit annoyed that it was only for a few seconds i really wanted more but how was it like seeing your aunt sort of be in the trailer of a christopher nolan film i mean you must have been extremely overwhelmed it was it was i mean if you can imagine if it was overwhelming for me i think for her, even after so many years in the business she's still breaking milestones it's it's incredible um I know she was there only for a little bit in the trailer but I think even if you look at the first trailer I think even Robert Pattinson was there barely for like a glance. So I don't think that's what's important or uh, I think for her the important bit is not how long she's in the film but to be able to collaborate with such a genius and to be a part of something so extravagant and spectacular that not many uh, Indian actors have uh, the sort of privilege of doing you know so I think that experience of just working with him is a uh, sort of more meaningful than actually seeing her like for me seeing her on set was actually more like overwhelming than seeing her in the trailer yeah but yeah when when you see her name on that credit list at the end uh, of the trailer it's pretty it's pretty awesome i mean it's incredible i mean yeah you're right as well because kind of renal also he had a very small uh, sort of a glimpse in the second trailer as well yeah. so yeah. it's true i think as long as long as she she sort of uh, <clears throat> contributes to the story going forward in the film uh which i haven't read the script or anything so i don't know what happens but <laughs> i think as long as she's doing that i think she's happy with it yeah no definitely man i think it's just incredible to know that this um that she began with raj kapoor so and now at this sort of stage of her career she's with working with christopher nolan i think it just goes to show what a trajectory she's had um and i think as a yeah an- i i, I I I sorry to cut you off. I actually read this tweet when it was announced that she's doing the film that her last film was with Anis Bazmi called Welcome Welcome Back and now her next film is with Christopher Nolan so just just two completely <laughs> different ends of the spectrum man. Yeah. Well, I mean 
technically, technically, at that point when it was announced, it was Welcome Back, but obviously she was in um Angrezi Medium. Right, Angrezi Medium, which which hadn't released at that time, right? So. Right, exactly, exactly. No, but I think it's wonderful, and please do uh, convey my congratulations to her as well. I think it's oh, sure, wonderful sure. to see that. But okay. I think Karan, I think what really sort of strikes a chord with me uh, is the way your story. I think your story sort of it kind of it kind of sort of resonates a lot with me because I think you've kind of gone through a lot in your life and you've kind of learned and kind of overcome a lot of hurdles in your life and obviously with the circumstances that have been you know uh with you what has been uh your greatest strength and your source of positivity I think uh, my family for sure you know I think when even though we are so busy in our individual lives I think the one thing that's so beautiful uh, about my family and I'm sure I think people feel the same way about their family as well is that when the chips are really down and you know when you do need that support in life when you're going through a difficult uh, phase or a difficult moment I've been lucky enough to have a family that's so incredibly supportive with uh, you know just they're just there for you uh, and uh, every time I've encountered a difficult phase which um, you know I think is part of the journey i think we've all gone through some stuff uh, mm-hmm. and i think it's important to build you into a sort of tough person sometimes you need to go through things like that but i've just been lucky enough to have a great support system in my family man. they've just been there whenever i've needed them to help uh, pick me back up and you know, help me get going again so, mm. so you know as a kid that. you know because as a kid when uh you, you know you were at that age and stuff uh what what were your thoughts and stuff at that at that point because obviously your childhood was relatively different to i guess um boys or other people around you who were the same age right so what what was your thoughts back then i mean how did you react to everything i mean i think you know back then especially when you're a kid when you're so young i was 11 when my mom fell sick first you're not really thinking about um you know your mindset and how you're processing things you're just taking things as they come to you when you're living in that moment in the present because you're, you're so young and you you know you're not even entirely aware of the entire situation because there's only so much you know um <clears throat> so i think at that time you're just riding the wave it's only mm-hmm. later on once things are sort of done and over with and it's been a few years down the line and you really introspect and think about those things is when you realize what your mindset was back then it's not in the present that you actually realize what's going on mm. um you know and at the time i thought i dealt with things reasonably well it's only now as a 26 year old when i sit and think back at some of the things that i did and some of my actions like then i think that oh you know what i could have you know done this different i shouldn't have behaved this way or that way So it's only now that I realize certain things that I did right or wrong, you know, back then. Mm-hmm. And I guess those things, when you reflect back, I guess those um, that sort of awareness kind of helps you to progress forward as well, right? For sure, man. I mean, I made a lot of mistakes, uh, especially in my sort of latter teenage years, post the age of fifteen to twenty. Um, I think it was like a big trial and error process for me in regards to everything, you know, uh, yeah. social situations, relationships, my work. all of that so uh, i th- and that was important for me because like you said when i was say from 11 to 15 i didn't have a normal childhood i wasn't hanging out with friends i wasn't you know sort of going for birthday parties and stuff i was so occupied with my situation at home so i maybe somewhere subconsciously felt this need to overcompensate i don't know but i think those years and those mistakes were important as well to shape me into the person that i eventually did end up becoming and i am now so i wouldn't say that i regret and you know for say you know, the mistakes mm. cuz i think they are so important for like character building and just experiences and they just teach you so many lessons so it's important to have those as well for sure and i think of when it came to your debut as well um unlike the other actors um out there your debut wasn't like there wasn't much fanfare around your debut yeah. you this big halla gulla or this big razzmatazz yeah. launch so to speak yeah Was this yeah. a conscious decision on like your family's part and your part or was it just the way things turned out? Um not really. Uh, I think if you have a film coming out you would want that to be a sort of good word of mouth or you want that to be buzz and people talk about it because of course you put in so much time and effort into something mm-hmm. you want people to come and watch it. Uh unfortunately that wasn't the case. Uh like you said there wasn't this big show around the film. I personally think 
uh, the amount of effort some of the people involved in the film put in. I think it deserved a little more effort as far as the marketing of the film is concerned. Um, nonetheless, uh, like I said, I have no regrets. Uh, it was the way it was for various different reasons. Uh, some things went right, some things didn't go our way. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, even now when I get messages sort of regarding the, some people, some didn't even know that it came out last year, you know. Yeah. So I think a little bit, um, some more buzz would have been nice. I think the film deserved that. Um, but you know, it is what it is. And you know, sometimes these things can happen. No, definitely. Um, the fact that obviously you've had, uh, the fact that obviously you come from a, you know, really so, like prestigious formula in the age, right? I mean, obviously, your mom was an amazing actress. I mean, your aunt is a, a legend too. Uh, your brother-in-law is also like a superstar. So how, like, how instrumental have they been in um, sort of guiding you throughout this process of acting? Like, how, like, have they ever done workshops with you? Have they ever kind of trained you in that way? No, man. No, they haven't. And I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful that they haven't, because uh, yeah. I'm someone who believes that the actor's journey and process is so specific and individualistic. Uh, that's why I personally don't really believe in these acting workshops, which have like 60 students, because it's h how difficult is it going to be for 60 people to believe in and imbibe the same teachings? It's just not possible because different things stimulate and work for different people, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, luckily enough, my family has given me that freedom to sort of discover myself and experience myself creatively in my own way without really stifling the process which has led to some very below average work on my behalf as well but like I said you know I think those things and those performances are important as well because if you're just doing everything right or you think you are then you're never going to improve you know so they just let me be of course they'll see my work and maybe after that give me some constructive criticism if they think there's any need for uh, that criticism to be given but otherwise they just let me be and let me do my thing and I, I couldn't be happy about that hmm. so what um what what's a typical day like for you on set i mean how do you prepare <laughs> what is your technique to prepare for a character regardless of what shade it is um so but like you, you know it obviously depends on the character itself i mean i've never had the good fortune of being in a comedy but i imagine the sort of process and the build up to playing a character in a sort of comedic um uh, setting would be different. I've only been a part of these sort of more serious uh, films and projects. But for me, I mean, a, a usual day on set, if it's like an early shoot, like a morning day shoot, then I'd be up at like 4, 4.30 a.m. for then like 20, 30 minutes of cardio or get some get some food in, have a cup of coffee, uh, ice my face so that there's no swelling. Even at 26, man, you got to do this stuff. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully if you have to say be um, at set, on set by seven, then get out of the, the hotel or wherever you're staying by six. And uh, I, I'm, I'm my biggest pet peeve is not being punctual and not being on time. So I make sure that I'm always on time. So get to shoot, shoot for whatever 12, 14 hours you have to get back, uh, hit the gym again, eat some food and go, go to bed and uh, do it all over again. <laughs> yeah, and I think um, it's interesting as well because every time I speak with actors, they always have this process where they kind of have to switch on and switch off from their characters. Um, what do you do to kind of switch on and off? Is there a specific process that you go through to kind of do that? No, I, I'm not a method actor, honestly. I'm, I would think that I'm way more instinctive uh, than I am sort of pre-planned or I don't stick to a particular regimen. But the only thing for me is, uh, for me, music is a big stimulant. So if I have an important scene, uh, regardless of what sort of zone that scene is in, uh, I would want to listen to some music. Of course, the music depends on what kind of scene it is. Like say, if it's like this really intense, serious scene, then I would play music that reflects that. And it's not necessarily lyrical music. It can just be some sort of background score or like you know some hand zimmer kind of stuff but yeah for me music is a big stimulant to just get into the creative flow of things you know hmm. is there a particular role you have in mind that when you see you're like like do you have anything that's sort of etched in your mind that you would love to do one day besides obviously not um, a genre, but character wise not really but when uh, when i think about it but, you know like i never had a dream role my dream was like i told you earlier in this interview is to be able to play an array of different characters 
convincingly. I think that for me is the dream rather than just one specific role. But uh, sports biographies have always uh, intrigued me. I don't think that uh, apart from Mary Com, we've had a, a male centered. Mary Com is obviously the exception, but apart from that, even when it comes to boxing, we haven't really had like a great, great, pretty boxing film, uh, at least in a while. So I would love to do something like that. Hmm. Definitely. Definitely. And I think you have the physique of a sportsman. I mean, I can see that you're training, like literally, like even when you see your exercises videos on Instagram. I'm Man, like, okay. I was I was so fat in school and tied down by physical limitations that I now I'm trying to live vicariously through characters that I can play in different things. Yeah. But an athlete is definitely uh, something that I'd like to play. Just just to be able to get into the skin of someone like that and you know sort of follow that discipline and that routine. I, I can imagine it's it, it can be grueling but also very rewarding from a mental sort of aspect. You know? mm, but I think life as well when you are overweight as a kid, you know, it can really be detrimental. Um I remember going yeah. for a pat where people used to pick on me for my weight. I mean people still make digs out my way even now um was that was that the case with you as well did you also go through that um i i didn't get i didn't get bullied for my weight but i did get bullied for other things but i think in this day and age it doesn't matter it can be a lisp you can be overweight it can be your hair it can be something you're wearing i think if people want to sort of pick on you uh they can pick on anything you know you can do everything right and they'll still find a reason uh and i know when you're young these things sort of weigh you down a lot especially Mm -hmm. what your peers think of you um but like you know, the important thing is uh, to look up to the right people, to have the right role models, and to have a positive outlook. Uh, and you know, people uh, far worse than you and I or someone else who's being bullied have turned out to become some you know great human beings and done some great things. So I don't think you should let uh, people who you don't really value that much weigh you down. Just listen to the ones that matter and just take the positives and really focus on bettering yourself. And- no, definitely. Yeah. I think um, it's. Yeah, I think it's interesting as well because I feel like um sometimes we have to take that initiative, like how you've taken that initiative as well. Like if you don't feel comfortable doing something, then you've got to change right. it, right? So like I would, lo- you of course you have to lose weight if the character you're playing demands that. But I think this sort of shift we've had in the content that we're putting out these days, you don't have to look like a thick Russian. I mean, I saw the series called uh, Patha Lok. Uh, yeah, uh, is in it. What a phenomenal actor! Doesn't have even the hint, even the slightest hint of an ab, but uh, he was he was running, he was scaling walls, he was getting hit in the face, he was he was doing everything, man. So I think you know this new sort of wave of content, especially you know digital content, uh, has really paved the way for actors to sort of showcase their ability when they probably wouldn't have been able to do so because of certain physical criteria that would be there for casting, you know, maybe in a future film or something like that. So I think things are really changing for the better and uh, I think more actors are being able to sort of showcase what they can do. Hmm. Hmm. And post blank, um, in what ways have responsibilities changed for you? I mean, obviously we talk about the differences and all of the change in general, but in terms of responsibilities, um, what do you think has changed, if there has been any change, that is? Mm, um, there hasn't been too much of a change. You know, like I told you, after sort of blank happened, there was this sort of period, which was maybe a little frustrating when I had to sort of deal with there being no quality work uh, for me to do auditions I was giving was, was they weren't working out. So I think the only responsibility I had then was to myself to not let that bog me down and to just keep at it, uh, even though it can be frustrating for them. So keep like knocking on and just putting in that hard work every day, whether it's you know, being physically fit or going to auditions or working on your voice, whatever it is, just to make yourself better. So I think that's a responsibility that I took about uh, took upon myself, which was to not let these things sort of bog me down and to focus on the positives and just try and knock on ahead, you know, and try mm. and get better. Mm. So obviously you were working on uh, Durgavati before, you know, the lockdown happened. Yeah. Um, I mean, how was it like working on that film? I know you can't talk much about it because obviously you know, it's still under yeah. a production and you're still going through it. Yeah. But what was the experience yeah. like? I mean, obviously it's quite a special film because, you know, Akshay Kumar is producing it and obviously Bhumi Bednekar is, you know, the main uh, actor in it. So how, what has your experience been like working on the film? It was it, it was an amazing experience. Uh, you know, I, the day I even signed the film, I had nothing going suddenly. That evening I had this film and a couple of weeks later, I was on set. And the last time I was on set before that day was, I don't even know, like seven months ago. Okay. So there was definitely this 
this lingering anxiety and this nervousness on the first day like you know have i forgotten how to do it what's going to happen and my first shot was can i swear <laughs> it was horrible man right? the first shot was so bad but once like i got into the flow of things like in two or three shots later when i really sort of felt a little more comfortable um then i just started to like revel in it man i really enjoyed it it just reminded me how much i love what i do uh obviously getting to work with actors like arshad varsi sir and bhumi pedneker who i think i told you in your podcast i think so highly of her. i think she is really one of the top stars and one of the sort of best actors of her generation i think purely based on her versatility she and is. the diversity of her performances she's put out there in such mm-hmm. a short span of time it's been phenomenal you know whether it's physical transformations or her accent or just yeah it's fun that i'm really looking forward to that right? i'm it's so the, it's the closest i've come to playing someone like you know who is not this dark just dis- disturbed guy i mean there is a hint of intensity but it's a character i really enjoyed playing right yeah and i took a lot of learning uh, i took a lot, uh, i took a lot from working with her you know the scenes that we did i like you know i told you she's one of the best actors of her generation so you just tend to pick up so many things just by working with such actors and observing them and um, yeah i learned a great deal from her i have two more days left so i look forward to going back and finishing mm. those and i hope that you know, at some point in the future i get to work Yeah, definitely. Um on a final note, uh Karan, obviously um lockdown has uh, been a very difficult time for a lot of us. Um and I think we've all been trying to deal with it positively yeah. and in an upbeat manner. Um what during this process has been your mantra and how are you going to try and adapt that when you go back into the outside world and start working again? um i don't think uh, my mantra right now uh, would necessarily i don't know if i actually have a mantra i'm basically just taking it one day at a time and i think the times that we're living in it's i think it would be rather foolish to just say that mai august mein ye karne wala hu july mein ye karne wala hu because nobody knows uh, the direction that we're headed in so i think um, if i had to give advice to somebody and just say take it one day at a time focus on the day that's in front of you and the day that you're living um try and stay positive and hopefully you know if it's safe we can all go back to work soon and start uh, doing what we love doing i can't wait for one to go back to work and just be on set again man. so i'm really looking forward to it so that's what keeps me going no oh, definitely absolutely but but uh, i just wanted to say thank you uh, for joining me on film mission me and for this wonderful chat once again it's always great to catch up with you pleasure and uh, i look forward to seeing thanks thanks for having me man and i lo- i'd look forward to hearing more updates from you about your projects and your films and your ventures i think it'll be really exciting to see uh, what more we can see from karan kapadia a uh, post blank for sure man you have my number you know we're always in touch so uh, definitely anything pops up i'm sure you'll know about it <laughs> definitely definitely right, buddy but anyways take care man thanks for having me man bye take care dude thanks for having me Have a good day.